Use the brute force method to find all the possible Hamiltonian circuits. Which one is the optimal circuit? So in using the brute force method, we're going to list out every possibility, and whichever one has the lowest cost on it, that would be the optimal circuit. So the easiest way to do this is to do the method of trees. So we're going to start anywhere you want. I'm going to start maybe at the top there. So this is L. From L, I have three possibilities. I can go to M, I can go to N, or I can go to P. So I'm going to build this out as three different branches. One going to M, one going to N, and one going to P. So let's say I went from L to M. So from M, I can either go to N or to P. So now I have two possibilities. Let's say I went from L to N. So from N, I can go to either M or P. If I went to P, L to P, I could then either go to M or N. Okay, so I'm just trying to list out all these possibilities. So if I went from L to M to N, then I got to go to P, and then back home to L. If I went from L to M to P, I'd have to go to N before I go back home to L. L to N to M would then be P to L. L to N to P would then go to M to L. L to P to M would then go to N back to L. And finally, L to P to N would go to M back to L. So these are all the possibilities. There can't be anything else because I've listed every possible way to go. But one thing to note is, if I go from L to M to N to P to L, so for example, on the graph here, if I go from L to M, from M to N, to N to P to L, I would be tracing the 7, the 21, the 9, and the 11. Let's say I went the other way. Let's say I went from L to P to N to M to L. Notice that I'm tracing the exact same edges no matter which way I went. So that means that those two circuits are the same. You're tracing the exact same edges. So L to M to N to P to L is the same as L to P to N to M to L. So L to P to N to M to L, this right there, is the same as this first circuit. This is the same as number one. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, same idea if I go L to M to P to N to N or L. That's the same thing as L to N to P to M to L. So L to N to P to M to L. This is the same as number two. Okay, and then L to N to M to P to L. It's the same as L to P to M to N to L. So L, P, N, N, L. That one's the same as number three. So there's actually only three circuits that are unique to this graph. So let's list them out and then count up the edges and see which one has the lowest cost. So we have L to M to N to P to L. L to M to P to N to L, and L to N to M to P to L. So those are the only three unique circuits. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add all of these up. So from L to M is 7. From M to N is 21. From N to P is 9. And then from P to L is 11. So what I've done at the bottom here is I was saying all that. was just writing the edges there. I'm going to do the same, that, same thing for all of them. So L to M is 7. M to P is 4. P to N is 9. And N to L is 14. And then the last one there is L to N is 14. N to M is 21. M to P is 4, and P to L is 11. 
Okay, so I just wrote down all of those edges. So what I'm going to do is just add all these together. So just using a basic calculator, nothing fancy here. So 7 plus 21 plus 9 plus 11 is 48. 7 plus 4 plus 9 plus 14 is 34. And then 14 plus 21 plus 4 plus 11 is 50. Okay, so looking at the three possibilities, the one that has the lowest cost is 34. So that will be our optimal circuit. So if I were to just kind of do a rough sketch here. So L, M, N, and P. L to M, M to P, P to N, N to L. That one is going to be our optimal circuit.